the good old Zeploss Mason batteries. Oh, big scratch. Damn it, I hit the battery shelf. Did you like this shot when the camera was behind the battery when I pulled it out? I had to actually pull the battery out, put the camera behind the battery, put the battery back into the gap and then pull it out again while the camera was recording. I know, stupid, right? <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the Offcut Garage here. It's a late night show, finally again, nice and cool. We had like um, 220 amps today. No, no, just for a moment. Clouds and sun in a mix. The MPPTs had a lot of work today. Where's my number two? <laughs> Thank you so much for your support and welcome to all these new subscribers. Thanks a lot. Oh man, I haven't had these batteries out for a very long time. It could be over a year or something. Since we built the Powerball 2.0. Zeplos Mason batteries. Huh? Do you remember? The do-it-yourself batteries? This was the first one I built here, the Mason uh, 135 ampere hour. It came actually with the cells, but you have to put everything together yourself. So it's really good. It's like a, like a battery construction set. Oh yeah, look at this. What a beautiful build. Yeah, look at this. There was no epoxy in between the cells, only sticky foam, the Eva tape. And that's it. And then they have aluminum bus bars which are kind of flexible with this hump in between. I just saw I forgot to screw here on this PCB as well as over here. The Zeplos Mason battery box here are really, really good. I like this PCB in the middle, this clean installation. Ah, yes, I remember. Because the, um, the version one of the Zeplos BMSs here have only a 120, 150 milliamp passive balancer. And this was not enough to balance the whole battery pack. So I have actually installed the wiring harness for an active balancer. And we used this one here and could see that this active balancer balanced the whole battery within, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes or so. While this one took the whole night and didn't do much at all. And I left the harness in here because I said, well, we will need this again in the future. We have to find a solution to trigger this active balancer somehow because the passive balancer of the PCB is just not enough for this battery and this is only a 135 ampere hour battery. But now tonight we have to disassemble the battery a bit at least. We have to take out the version 1 of the Zeplos BMSs here. Honestly the version 1 of the Zeplos BMS was actually the best BMS they ever made. So the BMS is already turned off. First thing you want to do is take off the balance cables. And I am going to take out this longer bus bar here at the bottom of the battery, which disconnects the two rows of cells. Just for safety purposes, you know. Okay, and taking this bus bar out basically splits the battery in half. And if I would drop a bus bar or something or a tool in between these bus bars, it wouldn't make a short at all. It's basically two 24 volt batteries, but disconnected. Just uh, from a safety perspective. Let me take out main negative and main positive. And then we can take off the whole front plate of the battery. Ah, oh, now we can't. I think they are screwed from underneath. Ah, oh, damn it. Yes. Two screws underneath. Ha oh. ha there we go. And uh, just for safety purposes, we should cover these battery poles here with this. Oh, look at this. It actually fits. <laughs> I just had this uh, piece of cardboard lying around here and it fits. Nice. Nah, I actually, I actually cut this on purpose out of a leftover box here. Anyway, you should always cover your battery terminals with a cardboard or a piece of plywood or a rag or something. Just, you know, you don't want to have these terminals exposed here when you work on the battery. So cover them up as much as possible. Piece of cardboard is fine. Because you certainly don't want to have a... Yeah, it is now confirmed. It is really a 48100T 
10C. Ah, I told him it's a 48 150 amp, but this is only a 100 amp, so I'm not sure if he's still interested in this BMS. Sorry, Helmut, I really thought it's a 150 amp. Because apparently he has got two batteries with um, this BMS, with the 10C BMS already. But that's the 200 amp version he's got in his battery. And because you can't buy this anymore, he wanted a spare one. I said, yeah, I have got one. It's 150 one. I said, yeah, that's good enough. But now it turns out this is only a 100 amp BMS. Anyway, we will see if he still wants it. If not, it goes in the box with all the other Sepplers BMSs. It's a big box. Yeah, but now we have to um, we have to find out what are we doing with this empty space here. Yeah, we have to put another BMS through into this wonderful battery, and of course I want to use the case still. Look at this compression plate here, amazing! Three screws, three in the middle, three on the left, and it's really compressing these cells into this battery box here. It's perfect. So I thought, well, this is a 135 amp hour battery. A 100 amp BMS is totally fine. So, and because this is a Zeppelos battery, it obviously comes with the Zeppelos BMS, right? Uh, this, is, this is actually the front plate of the Frankenstein battery. We have never mounted. And this was the BMS which originally came with the Frankenstein battery. It's a 200 amp Zeppelos BMS. It's a 10E. Second version. But of course I don't want to install another Zeppelos battery in this 135 amp hour case. So I thought, what else can we do? Replacing 100 amp BMS with another 100 amp BMS. Of course, the JK BMS, yeah? With active balancer and everything we need. And to make this all work, because the mounting holes between the Seblos BMS and the JK BMS are not the same, I made, I made this adapter plate. So this frame, sits on the original six standoffs, like this. And then on these nipples, we can mount the JK BMS. Uh, what I didn't think about is the height, because the Zeppelos BMS sits fairly low, just above the front plate, because it has the communication ports and all the LEDs and dip switches attached to the main PCB. And obviously they need to stick out of the front plate. So it sits very, very low just behind the metal. But I have just seen we have actually enough space here, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. But then you would ask, what are we doing with the communication ports? Because the Zeppelos has only two RJ45s, one can, dip switches and LEDs. And the JK communication board looks very, very different from the Zeppelos one. This obviously does not fit. It was so good here in the in the Jackipper battery because the Pace BMS uses exactly the same communication board as the JK BMS. And even all the connection cables are the same. So upgrading a Jackipper battery or a Gobel Power battery which have the Pace BMS with the JK BMS is very, very easy. Even the mounting holes and the distance is exactly the same as for the Pace BMS. But here, Zeplos, hmm, a bit more challenging. And maybe one, one and a half months ago, someone sent me an email with a, with a 3D printer file for exactly the JK BMS inverter communication port pen panel PCB. And I actually printed one and it looks like this. This is a massive piece of 3D printing. This took like, if not even longer. And that is massive. Look how thick it is. I'm not sure if this is really necessary, but whoever that was, thank you very much. And let's see, I've never tried it actually, if it fits. Oh, it goes this way, obviously. Whoa! It's a perfect fit. And this is obviously for the power button as well. Good thinking, I like it. But obviously this one does not fit in the same location as these holes here. I would need to cut off two of these standoffs here, but then the whole BMS mount is a bit wobbly. So, but... How about if I... Let me do some uh, measurement. So I'm really trying my best here for the last uh, 20 minutes or so to get this all arranged and mount it onto this front panel here. But it's really hard. First I thought this one is a bit excessive here. This is like, this is like 10 millimeter and this is 5 millimeter because this is exactly the height it needs so everything is flush from the outside. You know, otherwise it would stick out. So this is actually a good design so far. 
but this is a massive plate and regardless what I'm doing it doesn't fit in so I believe because we have a smaller front panel here for this 135 ampere hour battery I don't think we can fit a 4.3 inch display anywhere here there's just no room for it it will be very very tight and messy to make all the cutouts in this front panel but JK also has a god what is it a 2.3 inch or something a smaller display but the smaller one hasn't got such a nice frame as this one here while over here with the larger front panel if you want if you really want a display and want this remove the old one put this one up here there's enough space oh very tight everything is very tight then i don't think it will work there's not much space up here you could have this sitting on the outside here like this and yeah, a little frame yep that could work this one can only be underneath the bms in this case because here with the bigger front panel we've got the battery terminals up here two positive two negatives got a fuse holder on this side and there's literally no space at all I thought we can come up with a universal solution for this, but obviously not. This is all custom made, specialized. I mean, not many people will have this 135 ampere hour, this smaller case from Zeploss. Most people will have the large one, 280, 320 ampere hours batteries. But yeah, that's pretty much the only space where we can fit it. The uh, day before yesterday, I actually wanted to go in and redesign my template with this cutout and then 3D reprint this whole part. Then I thought, well, what about if you just cut a hole in here just to test it out, you know, it's a prototype, so it can be rough. And I was actually surprised that you can drill and cut and file this plastic here. So no big deal. And it is actually a bit rough, but it gives us a good idea if this would all fit together. I can change my template later and have this cutout precisely made for this plug. But for now, this will actually do. Yes, perfect. So, and the next step is actually a major step because now we have to make the cutout into the metal front plate. And this is our zero hole. So I need to measure everything from here to this corner, to this corner, all the way up, and then make this rectangle cutout on the front panel. Ah, that'll be fun because I have to cut it from the outside. Because of all these standoffs here, I cannot use the jigsaw from this side. I really have to cut from the outside. Zero and 4.5. Okay, so that's our measurement. Now I just need to transfer this cutout onto the front panel, cut it, and we are done. Okay, you probably cannot see. Oh, you can. You can actually see it. There. That's the cutout we need to do. Uh, yeah, I've got two lines here. One is a f up. The other line is valid. All right, first hole. Wish me luck. It does. It pops in. Oh. Pops right back in. PCB. Mounting bracket. So that's perfect. Okay, it probably looks better if you have black filament. But you know, I'm not too concerned. I look more at the functional base here. This is probably as precise as I can work with my tools here in the off-grid garage. It's not the best. It's not the worst either, right? Especially if you do that. So the only other thing we need to do now is drill four holes so we can mount this plate to the front panel and then screw the PCB into position as well with four screws. 
So I believe we can just use M6 screws and they will fit perfectly into these holes and cut their own thread. It's a very tight fit, so that should work. No, this doesn't fit. I thought I can do the same here with M3 screws, but the hole here is too large. So this actually doesn't fit. I haven't got any other M3 screws which would fit in here. So we just drill out these mounting holes to 4.5 millimeters. Yes, they fit. M4 by 10 fits perfectly. So now I have used some M3 screws here on the corners to mount down our adapter plate. And this is bomb fest. It's very good. I like it. See, the cutout is not in the right position here. But this is a proof of concept. This is a prototype. It can look rough. No problem. Okay, so and finally, finally, here comes our JK BMS. And this should just fit perfectly fine over here. So I need to find some long M3 screws. They need to be, uh, there can be 200 M3 by 200, M3 by 20, sorry. <laughs> And here again, I made the standoffs on this adapter plate 2.5 millimeters. So an M3 screw just goes into the plastic self-tabbing screw. At least that's the plan. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it works. It goes in. You can, of course, uh, tap the plastic as well. It makes it a bit easier to get the screws in. And it's probably the correct way to do it. But here, just for testing purposes right now, just want to see if this all... Oh, this is bombenfest. No problem. Huh? Look at this. It's not bad. And this is the outside. Got the nice communication board, all the LEDs. Okay, I need to get these uh, screws here in green or pink. So it matches the black and white. I'm just kidding. I haven't got black screws at the moment, so it looks a bit offensive, I know. But again, proof of concept, nice. The Zeplos JK upgrade. That is really cool. So, and now I have to take everything off again because my wife wants to prime and paint all the cuts in the metal. She's got all the acrylic primer and paint in her art studio. So she offered to help and I'm not saying no. Even it looks like there would be enough space for a display, but it's not. But I may have this smaller 2.3, is it a 2.3 inch or something? I don't know. I may have this smaller display in stock somewhere over there. Uh, let me have a look. Found it. This one also comes with a power button here. Yes, it fits. Yeah, nah, all good. They are still using the same connector. And it comes with this weird adapter construct here. It's got a super long cable with it. And then the display sits on this metal bracket, which we can take off and then 3D design and print our own. So we can use this display here at the top somehow, cover all these holes. We've got mounting options here from the old display, which we can use. And then put this one behind the screen. I just um, charging the Frankenstein battery. It was a bit low. And this is the big 4.3 touchscreen display. So if I disconnect this, plug in the small one. Yes, it comes on. It works. So it gives us the voltage, of course, the amps, uh, state of charge, and that's pretty much it. And I think we can turn off the display. That is actually pretty good. And if I long press it, ah, then it turns off the BMS. And then it starts again. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm charging only with 2.9 amps. The Frankenstein battery is in parallel with my battery shelf. It's already after sunset. Oh, the display actually turns off itself. That's even better. Okay, let me see if I can design another 3D printed uh, template here to hold the screen in this position and also cover these holes. And this template would also... Yeah, and this template should also fit the larger front panel here because the display and the buttons and the mounting holes are the same. Okay, I'll probably do the design tonight and we can print it tomorrow morning and have it ready by noontime around. Uh, that's the plan. Let's see. You have a good night's sleep and we see us again tomorrow with the template. 
The pressure is on. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. I have got something. Yeah, it's actually been a couple of days now since I told you I'm um, doing the 3D design and printing. Tested a few designs and I was also very busy testing the Zeplos Polo battery with the Zeplos BMS version 3 and the... You've seen the videos. Okay, so without further to do, there are some, there are some prototypes in here as well. So this is not all something we need. So let's start with um, the communication board and the front panel someone made. So this all fits perfectly in here. And I have also made, not this one, this one here, this one. This one was just a template and a bit of a f up. So this is only a cover to cover the, some communication holes here. So we put this on top of these two standoffs and it covers all our LED and RJ45 openings here we had before. It doesn't need any further mounting. It just gets pushed down from the actual carrier for the BMS. Pretty cool design, eh? But here, let me um, show you. Is that the correct one? Yes, that's the one here. So this is the front panel for the display up here. Covers all these holes from the buttons. And it works with a 2.5 inch display for the JK BMS like this. Okay, so we have to feed this one in from behind and then flip it over. And then we push this one in place. And at the back, it has this little bridge here with two holes in it. There you can see the two holes. And there we can actually use the original screws which were used to mount the display to this metal bracket. We can reuse them just to secure the um, display with our frame. But you have to do this before you mount it actually. So there's no further modification here in this area necessary. We're just using the original cutout for the Zeplos display. And now pull the cable through here. And then this here just clicks in like this. Yeah. There you go. There's your display mount. You can operate the button here on the side to turn it on and off. So on the back here, you can see the bracket. It just clamps into this existing opening of the front panel. I have designed a, um, yeah, this one here, a frame as well, which goes on top of here and uses the existing mounting points for the old display. See these four standoffs there? So this would actually sit like this on top. And then you can secure this display adapter here to this frame as well, which holds it in place. But I figured this is actually not really necessary because I made the fit so tight, it just clicks in and there's no, there's no real point where you can actually grab it and pull it out again. So you really have to push from the back to take it out. So I think this design is as good as it gets. Maybe in a future upgrade we can have some little clips or so and they go around the corner here to hold this in place but at the moment i think it's as good as it is and we don't need any further frame or something here so we've got this one the front panel design and the display so this is something i would probably um, adjust as well in a future update for the front panel so we don't need to drill any extra holes here i'm not a big fan of that there are so many existing mounting points in the back here we can use you just need to change the um, the design of this front panel cover here. But this was not designed for the Zeplos box. This was just a generic adapter for the communication board for the JK BMS. And as you have seen, I have used one of the standoffs here to actually fix that in place. But I think with a different design, so we don't need any front screws at all. This one in place. And then we have the adapted and modified JK carrier. This has now the cutout here for this middle contact and sits on top of all that like this. I had actually to modify these standoffs here and make them eight millimeters longer. See, this was the first design. 
because I didn't realize the actual cables and plugs were so outstanding. I mean, literally, I mean it outstanding that the BMS didn't fit on top of it anymore. But now this design gives us enough space here for the cables and connectors as well underneath. And I've also made these nipples here a lot stronger. Okay, I have now put the carrier in place and as you can see this one is actually holding oh, this one is actually holding down this cover here which covers the cutouts for the um, communication for the old communication. So this is all done. We've got the JK100 amp BMS here and we put this in place. Use the M3 by 20 mm screws and they go far enough into these standoffs. Ah, oh, hang on, before we do that we have, to, um, we have to connect all these cables here, otherwise we can't reach them anymore. So this one here, one goes there, and this one goes here. Yo, that's better. Yes, and now we have enough space. Heaps of clearance and space. I hope the whole design is not too fat now. Well, we will see this in a minute. Okay, the BMS is now screwed down, and I'll tell you what, this is, <laughs> this is bomb fest, really. There's no movement at all. Okay, let's quickly connect these cables. There's no ca oh shit. Okay, at some stage I would probably cut this cable here and um, shorten it quite a lot because there's still an adapter cable plugged in which is another 150 mil or so and this is long enough to connect here to the display port on the BMS. We don't need this one actually here. This is more for an electric bicycle or a small car or something what they use in China, you know. So you've got the display here in the cockpit and then the cable goes all the way back down to the BMS. But here we don't need this extra long cable. All right, big moment. Let's see if it fits. Comes the Sepplos Tower. All right, I've never measured it, never. I hope it just fits. Yeah, the cable is a bit of a problem now. Get this underneath. Oh, yes, it does. But the question is, how much space do we have between the BMS and the compression plate? Ooh, look at this. This is not too bad, actually. This is much better than I thought it will be. This is easily 30, 35 millimeters of space. Heaps of space because we still have to make our connections here. Shouldn't be a problem. Lots of space. Yeah, guys, that's, <laughs> that's how it looks like. It turns actually out a lot better than I thought. Because at the beginning I thought, oh, cutting in this metal here because it's so thick. This steel here is over two millimeters and it's not really pleasant to work with. Yeah, if you want them in black or any other color here, matter of taste, I would say. What do you reckon? The Seplos JK battery. Yeah, and as you can see, the 3D printer really comes in handy now with such an upgrade. It is a fantastic tool to, to uh, design and print these plastic parts which exactly fit this display, for example. It would be very, very hard to build such a bracket in metal or wood or something. So if you haven't already a 3D printer, I'll link my one down below as well. I, I did a video as well when I unboxed it and had some issues with it, but this is all fixed now and it works a treat. I really love it. If you still have some time after building your own battery and solar system and watching my videos, well, 3D printing would be another thing you could tap into. Okay, my friends, I think so far this video for today. Upgrading the Seplos battery with the JK BMS. As you could see, it is a bit of mechanical work necessary to do this. But we are now have all the templates for the um, uh, BMS carrier, the display holder for the small display here for this smaller box, and also a cover for the original cutouts for the communication ports. Of course, I link all the files to the 3D printing material down under the video. It is all on Tinkercad. You can follow me there as well. You can open all these designs here and change them up as you need them. Um, except this one here. This is from Thingiverse or something. I link this down below as well. This guy made it and I've just reused his design then. Yeah, but I can imagine that you actually use a red color for the master BMS for all your printing. 
and then a blue or white color or something for all the slave batteries. So you can actually see right away which is your master, what are the slaves. You can play with the filament colors as you like. I think white doesn't turn out too bad actually. And guys, in the next video we want to connect this BMS then to the battery, do the first test drive, see how everything works. And then we can close this box here for good again until I get um, plex screws here, right? Or the pink or green ones. <laughs> And in a future video, we can also upgrade this Mason box here, the 280. This is our battery 1.0 out of the um, black plastic box we had built years ago. First battery build we did. So we can upgrade this one here with the 200 amp JK BMS as well. Change the design a bit and also put a bigger display in. Because, because here on this front panel, we have enough space to actually mount it. Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thank you for your hundreds of comments under the videos. I'm really struggling to keep up with replying to them. I'm reading them all, but replying takes a lot of time. And time is always tight here in the off-grid garage. And a special thanks goes to all these wonderful and beautiful people who are donating and supporting the channel financially. Thank you so much for that. It helps a lot and makes these videos possible. And until the next one, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Sipless JK battery. Oh, yeah. <laughs>